All right, let's move on to talk about yet another common misconception, new 5GC. What is new 5GC? New 5GC is a sialic acid. A lot of these terms are quite technical, uh, so I'll break them down. Sialic acids essentially serve as cell surface markers and are used as antigens for organisms or viruses or pathogens that want to enter human cells. Humans don't make new 5GC. There's an enzyme that does make new 5GC that was lost in our history. And part of the hypothesis around this is that earlier versions of malaria used new 5GC or may have used new 5GC to enter cells. Thus, by losing new 5GC on the surface of our cells, we may have been able to escape that malaria pandemic, epidemic, et cetera. Current variations of malaria, including Plasmodium falciparum, will bind to our current sialic acids, which include new 5 ac So humans do, five, do have new 5 ac which is a sialic acid on the surface of our cells. It serves as a sort of protein marker, a tag, an identification piece on the cell. And the difference between new 5 ac and new 5 gc is one oxygen atom. They're very, very closely related molecules. Concerns regarding new 5 gc are based on the fact that this sialic acid is present in a lot of animal foods that we eat, providing fodder for anti-animal uh, ideologies, usually advanced by plant-based theorists. You can see here that foods like chicken, turkey, duck, uh, cow's milk, goat's milk, red meat, these are the highest sources of new 5GC. Now, that's not really a problem unless you can show mechanistic issues or we can show problems in humans. This has not actually been shown to be a problem in humans. Most of the concern over new 5GC is based on, you guessed it, animal studies. You might have guessed epidemiology studies, but no, it's based on animal studies like this one in which they created knockout mice. So you can take mice who do have new 5GC on the surface of their cell, knock out new 5GC, and then give them new 5GC. In the animal studies, this generates anti-new 5GC antibodies, and you see higher rates of cancers in these mice. Now, that is the majority of the data on new 5GC that is damning for this molecule. It's not something that you can directly translate to human studies. And in fact, when we look at humans in the presence of new 5GC antibodies, which is shown very clearly in this study, um, then we see that this having a new 5GC antibody probably isn't that big a deal. This study is titled, No Increase in Colon Cancer Risk Following Induction with New 5GC Bearing Rabbit Anti-T-Cell IgG in Recipients of Kidney Transplants. And they say in the conclusions or at the bottom of the abstract, based on data from 173,960 and 385,505 patients without and with ATG induction, respectively, ATG induction is the New 5GC Bearing Rabbit Anti-T-Cell IgG we found no evidence that exposure to higher levels of anti-new 5GC is associated with a higher incidence of colon cancer. This study really begins to put the new 5GC fear-mongering to rest. I will just break it down so you all understand what's going on here. In kidney transplant recipients, sometimes those kidney transplant recipients will receive rabbit anti-T cell IgG, which is an immunoglobulin against T cells from rabbits, which has uh, new 5GC in it. Now, so we're giving new 5GC in higher doses to people who are receiving kidney transplants. This is akin to the idea that humans are getting new 5GC in their bodies when they eat red meat. And we do generate anti-new 5GC antibodies when these kidney transplant recipients are induced in this way, but there is no associated incidence of higher rates of colon cancer, and there were 38,000 people that received this ATG induction with the kidney transplant. So there is really not good evidence in humans. This is very much akin to what we see with TMAO. We're either using animal studies, we're looking at observational studies, and when we actually look at human studies, it doesn't appear to be harmful. And why would it be? Let's return to the premise. Let's return to the overall framework with which we view these things. Why would a molecule that is very commonly present in all of our foods that have been at the center of human existence for hundreds of thousands of years, hominid existence for millions of years, be bad for us. This is really silly. And I think it exposes the shallowness of the fear mongering that goes on toward animal foods. People are in, they're just so desperate 
to find things about red meat that make it bad for you or organs that make them bad for you when in fact, these are the best foods for humans on the planet. And finally, I wanna share this study, which is quite interesting and puts all of this discussion of new 5GC into an evolutionary context, absence of new 5GC and presence of anti new 5GC antibodies in humans an evolutionary perspective. What is so interesting here is that this paper brings up the idea that there are other species, there are other small mammalian species that do not have new 5GC, specifically the mustelids like ferrets. They also have lost new 5GC. Who knows why? They probably have a defect in the same enzyme, the CMAH enzyme, and they consume animals like humans that are rich in new 5GC. So that is something that is a very good model. They say, however, in the majority of non-human species that lack new 5GC do not consume diets rich in new 5GC, making it unlikely they will ever have been immunized against this sialic acid. A notable exception are the mustelids, ferrets, martens, their relatives, known for preying on various small mammals rich in new 5GC. And what we do not see in ferrets, mustelids, and their relatives is massive cancers in nature or complete extinction. So here's a good model for why new 5GC is a, as we would call in the crypto community, a FUD, the promulgation of fear, uncertainty, and disbelief. Uh, it's bullshit. Essentially, there's no problem eating new 5GC containing foods, nor is there any evidence in the medical literature that anti new 5GC antibodies in humans, as demonstrated by the rabbit studies, are harmful. But what this does continue to bring up is the notion that so many in the medical and nutritional space have lost perspective. We have simply lost perspective. We don't have any sort of evolutionary framework from which to view these things. Why would something, why would a sialic acid present in meat and organs, the very foods that foods, the very foods, that made us human be bad for us. That is the framework that we should approach this from. And when we do that, we see all of these other pieces of literature that say, oh yeah, new 5GC is probably not harmful for humans at all. Anyone who tells you otherwise probably hasn't spent a lot of time in the wilderness, doesn't understand what it's like to hunt and hasn't read these studies. They're just concerned about the possibility of red meat being bad for humans, which we know it is not. So these are at the center of my message, guys. Organs and meat, the most sought after foods by humans throughout human evolution, prioritize these and you will thrive. And do not be worried about components that may change when you are eating organs and meat. If your cholesterol goes up, I'm not worried about it as long as you remain insulin sensitive. I have done so many podcasts on that in the past. I can do another one if you guys want. Please refer back to the catalog. There's so many podcasts about the importance of metabolic health and not losing the context of metabolic health when dealing with elevated LDL. In some people, when they eat more saturated fat, LDL goes up. Does that mean LDL is a bad thing? No. Is LDL the causative component of atherosclerosis? I would say no. Is it involved? Probably, but that doesn't mean it causes it. And if you're metabolically healthy, LDL has a lot of other good roles in humans. We see the same pattern over and over. Compounds like choline, compounds like carnitine that have valuable roles in humans they get rolled into these fear-mongering FUDs, fear, uncertainty, and disbelief promulgations, and we're losing the whole context. These things are not bad for humans. They're a part of the foods that make us the massively intelligent, resourceful uh, beings that we are when we've come to dominate the planet. These are an indispensable part of human evolution, and we should not fear them in any way, shape, or form.